Hello guys, welcome to the another session. In this session, we are going to look into Jupyter Notebook. If you look into this topic name, then you will find that there are two terms. One is Jupyter, another one is the Notebook. So Jupyter is the name of the project and Notebook is the application which is being designed within this project. So basically, the Notebook application is a type of interactive document for code, text and data visualization which we are going to see in our upcoming sessions. So let's jump into the Anaconda shell and we will look into how we can access the Jupyter Notebook. To access the Jupyter Notebook, you need to come to the Anaconda cell and over here you need to specify Jupyter. Just mind the spelling of Jupyter Notebook and over here we need to specify Jupyter Notebook and press enter. And once it will open, then you will find that it looks something like this and if you closely look into this then you will find that it is a web based application so let's create a new notebook so to create a new notebook you need to come here and click on new and over here you can select python 3 so once you created a new jupyter notebook then you need to specify over here the name so my first notebook rename now suppose that if you want to run any of the program then you can run it over here so you can write 2 plus 2 and you need to press shift enter then you will find the output so now you must be asking that what actually happening whenever we are running this program so let's understand it so whenever you are running a jupyter notebook then there is a kernel which is running behind the scene so let's look into that so if you remember that we have executed a command Jupyter Notebook and the moment Jupyter Notebook gets executed then you will find that this program is listening whatever we are typing into that web tool for example we have started a kernel and we have typed something 2 plus 2 and after that it automatically saved it and this happened through kernel kernel actually listening whatever we are doing into that interactive cell and as per our instruction it is performing those exercise behind the scene for example when we started it we have created a new notebook then this kernel listen that and then it serves that whatever we have requested for now here i wanted to give you one point to remember is that python's jupyter kernel uses the ipython system for its underlying behavior in our previous session, we have discussed about IPython interpreter. So now let's jump into the Jupyter Notebook and let's look into some of the useful commands which we use frequently while working with Jupyter Notebook. So now let's look into some of the feature of this Jupyter Notebook. Over here you will find that this drop down and it contains code, markdown, raw and be convert and heading so for example if i want to make this line as a heading so we need to write double hash and over here we need to tell that we are going to loan the topic tab completion feature and then i will choose over here markdown then it will give us this header text it converted that particular line into a heading now we will press shift enter then you will find that it has introduced this line as a heading now let's look into tab completion feature so what actually it is so suppose that if you are having date and time package now we wanted to understand that what actually method it contains so what we do we will write date time dot and after dot we will press tab then you will find that it gives us all the options or say all the functions information which exist within this particular package date and time let's look into some other example for example if we are having a numpy package numpy as an np shift into and if we will type np dot and press tab then you will find that all the method and function information which numpy package offers us so we can easily identify what are the functions and methods available within numpy package so now let's proceed further and let's look into some of the other feature of this jupyter notebook so for example if you are having a list equal to some values now suppose that if i wanted to know about this object what actually this object is 
then we can easily identify with the help of question mark if we put less question mark shift enter then it will provide us this information so if you closely look over here it has given us this information what this object is this is a list object and it is from a string form look like something like this and what is the length of this and it is based upon mutable sequence that means you can change it anytime and over here if you will type for example if you close it over here and same way tuple if you are going to create a tuple and if you specify two four six enter now let's look into what this object is then we can tell that top question mark shift enter then you will find that it has given us the information tuple and here the built-in type is immutable that means you can't change this one so this way you can easily introspect any of the object which exist in your program so now let's proceed further and let's look into some of the other feature of jupyter notebook so to demonstrate you the another feature of jupyter notebook i am going to open a spider editor where i will write a small program and that program i will access over here so to open the spider program i am going to use another anaconda shell and over here i will type spider if you gone through my earlier course then you will find that where i have introduced the spider program which is basically an editor where we can write the python programming so it is opening now so now it has opened so let's write a program over here so i'm going to write def function xyz and within that i am going to tell return x plus y divided by z and within the same program i am going to access it so over here e equal to 10 b equal to 12 some random value for c 8.9 and over here i will call result equal to calling this function a comma b comma c save it so let's save it and over here just specify your name over here so any name my script dot py save it now this program i have written now let's access this program within jupyter notebook so let's run it in jupyter notebook so to execute that program which we have written in a spider editor so we will write over here percentage run and we will specify the name so i will tell my script.py and shift enter so now you must be wondering you are not getting any output but it is not like that the program is get loaded into your memory so you need to run for example if you are typing result shift enter then you will get the output of from that program if you want to access the variable within the program for example we have written abc if you remember if you go into that then you will find that we have used 8.9 so let's look into that so here you will type c and shift into then you will find that it is giving us this output as we have specified the value of c is 8.9 so this is about running the program now suppose i want to access the program in this jupyter notebook so what i can do so let me explain over here select this one and press e then it will give you this option and over here i will type percentage load and the name of the program which i wanted to access my script dot py shift enter then you will find that it has loaded the program which we have written into the spider notebook now let's proceed further and let's look into some other feature of jupyter notebook so jupyter notebook offers us various magic command so if we want to check the what are those commands then we can use something like this we need to write percentage magic and shift enter so this will give us the detail about the magic command and which you will find it over here so all those magic command you can execute over here this i have already shown you that is percentage time it so let me pop it out so over here you will find that these are the magic commands available for example i have shown you earlier percentage time it uses it will return us how much time it is taking to execute a program if you want to find out then you can run it 
for example just take this one and come here press a now you will get a new line and over here you will paste it shift run shift enter then you will find that these number of nanoseconds it taken to execute this program and how many number of loops it has executed so these number of loops is being executed so now let's proceed further you can go through the entire document there are various magic command available and we are going to use some of them in this course so now let's proceed further so one of the major benefit of using Jupyter Notebook is it display the data visualization within this interactive notebook so what it means so for example we are having some random number and I want to graph those random number in the same notebook so how we can do that so we can do it through the matplotlib so let's look into some working example so over here I press a and I will import import matplotlib.py plot so this is the library as plt now I will generate some random number so over here I will type plt dot plot and here I will generate random number and cumulative summation so I will do that so first let me generate this number so this number gets generated and now I want to calculate the cumulative summation with the help of sum. so this is a simple program which I have written and it will plot the cumulative sum of 50 numbers and draw it in a graph so to use it we need to again add a line over here and we will tell that percentage matplotlib in line so that means we want to use it over here shift enter now let's execute it again shift enter then you will find that the number it has generated and after that it has applied the cumulative sum and then it has generated this graph so this is the power of Jupyter notebook you can do the data visualization over here that's the reason we are going to use Jupyter notebook for data analysis so now on this note I am stopping